Okay, here a very fast update on the mealworm farm. As you know, I brought them through into the front room because it was a bit too cold in the toilet room for the beetles to come out and the pupa. So let's just do an update on this. So I'll just show you the front drawer. Well, I cleaned all of the big top um, box into here because that was just getting too much and too full. So I cleaned them all into here. I just tipped it, uh, tipped basically everything into this drawer. Put on all the stickers that were there before. So we started on the 24th of April and today is the 28th, 29th, 20, 29th I think, 29th of um, June. So this is how long it's been taken. So that's when I first got them. So the last, the last time I gave them a top up was on in May. And you see this is all that's left. There's loads. So let's just do a quick recap of that. I wouldn't put that much in again unless you've got a whole host, a lot and lot and lot and lot and lot of worms. So I'd most probably only put half of that in. So what am I saying? I think one and a half kilos is enough for the whole procedure from mealworm through to beetle. Another thing, um, I've, as you see, I've written down, I've taken them all out today. And let's just, here, yeah, let's just have a look. This is what's left of the mealworms. This is all I have. So there aren't many left and they are nearly ready to go. So I've just put them into this tiny little container, but I am keeping this and I'm going to sieve through this maybe in a couple of weeks again, because I have noticed I have small ones. Look, that's a tiny one here. That's a tiny one. So I have small ones in there as well. So just to make sure I haven't missed any, I, I will keep that for another fortnight and then I'll sieve through, get rid of the fraz and then keep the oatmeal and then keep that for the next stage because let's have a look here. I had to rejig this a few hundred times <laughs> and it's still not right. So look what's going on here. Loads of loads and loads and loads of beetles and when I come across one that's really deformed I take them out but look at that those are all the pupa that are left all of these and if I lift this gently hope I don't let's take this out for a second let's tip them in here there we go shouldn't have done this one-handed. Here we go, so I'll just place those here, make sure they don't go onto the table. Right, so why did I do this? Remember, the whole reason why I separated everything out is was because I bought these and I wanted them, I wanted to know exactly what's in, what they've been fed and so on, so that they're for human and pet consumption. That is why I've separated them out. And that is why I've got here all the beetles going crazy and laying eggs and so on. Look, loads, loads, loads. Every now and then I come across one that's deformed. I take it out straight away. They get fed to the birds. Um, best if you catch it early, but I don't always catch it early. So. And then, so what I'm saying is, what I will do then is once these are sort of dead and they've done their business and what they need to do, um, they've laid all the eggs and everything, they'll die off and then I'll sift all of this out, take the dead ones out, feed them to the birds. Let's put this back. And then I'll do a one-draw system because then I've sorted out 
most of those most of those that weren't right so that's the plan because a one draw system doesn't involve that much work you just have to sieve through at the end of the three months it takes um, to get rid of the frazz and then you're done and you're already on the next cycle um, or before then before the beetles actually happen so just before the beetles so when you've got the pupa and you see it's already developing into pupa you sift then the oats through because what you want is you don't want um, you don't want to throw away the eggs of the next lot so that's what will be happening so I'm waiting for this lot and for this lot and then I'll take what's left of the of the oats from here I'll put into here so there you see I topped the oats up two cups on here because there wasn't a lot there was barely anything in there um, on the 19th so that's what I've been doing that's the plan so that's the quick update to that and as I say we're nearly ready I'm just waiting to see what's happening with this lot and it's just barely barely a handful here Let's see that's not many so that's what's happening and then then I've got two more drawers to go I don't know if I'm going to be dividing them up or not or, or not I'm still deciding on that what I'm going to be doing or whether I get just another bag separate bag full and restart the whole procedure with another lot most probably not because I'll have so many eggs in here that I think I most probably will be able to divide up the mealworms from there into two drawers maybe even into three because there'll be so many eggs in there and then tiny mealworms we'll I'll keep you updated as to what I'll be doing generally speaking now that they've once been sifted out from the bought ones and I now know what's going on with them and I've sorted them to recap I am going to do a one draw system yes uh, some of them will eat the pupa and some of them will eat some of the eggs but that's just the way it goes it makes the whole sorting business a lot easier I have to take then care of the sifting and the oats um, maybe once or twice once before the pupa and maybe when the pupa come um, so that'll make life a lot easier this was rather involved the first lot because I said it was for human and pet consumption if you're not into that and if you're only breeding it for your animals as in the uh, lizards or birds outside then you can do straight away a one draw system and it's a lot easier okay that was my recap on that see you later bye